afternoon everyone welcome back to the channel before we go any further if you like my content please click that little bell with notifications like and subscribe to the channel because it really helps with the algorithms and i've got loads more content coming up soon so further ado a lot of people on sites say safety first but i disagree with that what i say is safety third coffee first that's the most important and um, as it's been chucking it down the rain lately and the weather has been somewhat rubbish a um, bit of an afternoon in the workshop it's quiet today quite weak actually um i thought we'd have a bit of a um, bit of a review a bit of a look around at um one of my prized bits of kit and a lot of people out there certainly um outside of the uk will probably have never heard of these uh, this brand of machine and there's one clue what we're going to look at today all of you should know what that is if you don't it's a euro connector on the other end of it is that end and we all know where that goes don't we and it goes up there yes there is a piece missing off that deliberately at the moment so we are going to have a look at a little review of the workshop beast now this machine is a single phase 350 amp mig welder manufactured by these wonderful people here in the uk now this welder as you can see it hasn't got a lot of bells and whistles compared to a lot of the other um, red yellow and blue boxes but this is bomb proof this is built for production this is built for comes with extra stickers this is built for heavy duty portable balls to the wall everyday welding that's the ticket on the back you have a look at those numbers how many other welders do you know that can actually say that okay and mean it all right there's a lot of red yellow and blue boxes out there that state these but when you actually comes to it they don't mean it and the other thing with these machines, how many of the main, major manufacturers, if you buy one of their machines and it goes wrong or it stops working during a shift, how many people will give you a loan machine within maybe six to eight hours while yours is being repaired? I don't know that. These people will. This is awesome. So... Well, uh, we'll do, it. We'll do a, bit of a, a bit of a a bit of a bit of a look. See, yeah, there's not much to be uh, not much else to be going on today. Um, so, she's been used. She's got some scratches. She's got some war wounds, which is to be expected. Um, two modes: MIG and stick, or for gouging. It is suitable for a gouging power supply. Okay. Um, very simple controls up here. Inching button for wire feeding, selection between MIG or stick, current meter, voltage meter, inductance control, which normally lives at midway, wire feed speed, voltage 11 around 29 amps, sorry, 29 volts, and current for arc and gouging so yes 250 amp it will do 250 amp for arc and stick welding and gouging which is pretty good it's pretty good portable chassis frame really good quality casters two front ones are braked so at the moment because it's on the bench i don't want it falling off it's braked up now arse end of the world a mahoosive cooling fan, which really does work. And you know it works well because this machine gets cleaned out every four months. Get the, get the lid off, get the airline in there, and it is well and truly full of schmoo and dust and stuff. So, these two. Big old power supply. I spec'd it when I bought it. Five metres of six mil. HO7 rubber cable 
Um, standard from the company is they use SY, but uh, I'm not a fan of that stuff. And uh, a lot of you might not know that SY cable, if you don't know what SY cable is, I happen to have some over here, and I will show you. Du -du 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 -du. He says try not to fall over something in the workshop. Right, that is SY cable. That's just a spare piece for something else. Flexible armoured, it's used for control. It's not actually rated, but paint mains cable. Which is weird, because it's perfectly good for it, and I use it for all sorts of things, but there we go. And um, a five metre gas hose. Doo -doo -doo -doo. And what I do with all my gas hoses, oh, is I put airline connectors on the end. PCL Vertex airline connectors, and just happen to have there, because you can put the dingus in the doodah, and when you've had enough of the dingus in the doodah, da -da, you can take it out. And also, when I go mobile, the cylinder stays in the van, and I can just extend my gas line with another rail line. Which, at the moment, for me, is advantageous, because I've had, I've had a broken wrist. You can see that, well, all that. That's the position my wrist naturally sits in at the moment, and I'm still doing physio to get it straight again. So it's not the greatest, all right? So, coffee is going down well, nice and quiet this afternoon. What else do we want to see? Let's go inside. We'll open the door. And in fact, we'll go around the other side first, and we'll just, uh, just reinforce the point because Phil Weeks factors welding machines. Have a look, look them up on the web. They're really good. They've got loads of models. Um, the, the smallest one they do is a, I think it's 170 amp, a single phase, and they do right the way up to 330 amp, three phase. They do TIG, and they do plasma, and they do generators as well for these machines. So I've got one of their jennies, and it's buried in the corner of the workshop at the moment. Um, and that is a very good machine. It's loud, but it's very good. So what are we looking at here? This is the inside of the world. Not a lot in here. Um, for those of you who are welders, you've, you will all be familiar with this. We've got a burn back adjustment. We've got our polarity change, no gas or gas. Okay, so no gas, for those of you who don't know, is when you use flux core wire, typically. Um, it's, the, it's the basic wires that get used for people that buy cheapo welders from places like Machine Mart for doing cars. And uh, it can be really crap wire, but then again, it can be actually very, very good. And we'll come on to that later on. Now then, having mentioned said, said welders, and this is what you call a wire feed. It is mahoosive, okay? This wire feed is mahoosive. That's a hand for scale, all right? That motor at the back, Swedish made, one of the best, it's four amp. It is absolutely monstrous. And this thing will not stop, okay? I've had it pull the end of a reel of wire um, when you get right down to the end. I'll show you around there. Here's one we'll move about later. Um, usually, if I can find it, well, this, oh, this one hasn't been put on too much, but that is right at the, the back end of the, of the wire in there. Sometimes they get wrapped around the wire, or you know, they're, they're terminated onto the reel, and it'll pull it off, no problem at all. Last bit, so you actually you end up with the last few metres of wire off the reel in the gun. Right, excuse me, it's coffee. It's thirsty work, this presenting luck. We should put that up there. There's a, there's a good there's a good feature, look at that. They put a nice rubber mat on the top. Perfect for putting your coffee on. So yeah, so wire feed, that's your wire feeding um, tube, or spring on there. Usual uh, reversible rollers in there. Um, the machine comes with a set of spare rollers. Uh, I've got this set up at the moment for 1.2. This little box of bits, this is worth putting together. If you uh, if you go mobile and you definitely don't want to forget stuff or you suddenly have to change your plan, get yourself a little tin like this. Yeah, yeah, Marks and Spencers, posh ones, whatever. And I've got my spare rollers. So that 0.8 and a, a 1mm. I think the one that's in the machine is a 1mm and a 1.2. Spare tips, insulators, adapters, all the bits that you could possibly need. 
if you suddenly have a problem. This is also a really good idea. If those of you out there haven't heard about this, get yourself some Scotch Bright cloth. Okay, there's brown ones, which I think is medium, green ones, which is the same as on your washing up scrubber. And no, I'm not referring to your wife. Because this MIG wire, this is standard 1.2 steel MIG wire, it's actually quite dirty. So what we do, is a little trick I learned from a production engineering shop years ago. Get yourself a common garden clothes peg, all right, and put a bit of scotch bright between it. Now I bet you this one has been in use, so I'll show you what you pick up. Look at that. That crap is all off the wire, okay? Now obviously your welders have been used in a dirty environment anyway, so there is dust around, but that gets scraped off nicely as you're using the machine, and you end up with a lot cleaner wire by the time it gets to your torch. All right, so. Other accessories that come with the machine as standard. This is a Parweld MB36 torch, and the reason it's a 36 is because it's a 350 amp machine. Now I could do a comparison with the size of the torch and the size of the shroud. In fact, I will, for those of you who've not realized how big these torches are, compared to something you might buy from a small auto body welding shop. Okay, that's the shroud, the gas shroud. I'm going to wander over here. This one you will have seen before on my other videos. This is my portable baby, the Kempi Mini Arc Evo. Check out that for a comparison size. This is would be equivalent to an MB15, and you can slip that right over the top. Absolutely massive. And it needs to be for the heat. Yeah, because this machine is designed to use big wire. And you would physically melt an MB15 torch. Um, the other good things with this is obviously a standard shroud. It's quite big, quite chunky. Stick your finger in the end of it. But for nice smaller stuff, if you're doing a bit more pokey stuff, you can get the conical shrouds as well. There's a bit of a size difference there, so you can see there, a bit of a difference. So they're good. I use, I like using the conical shroud on things. Um, I think it focuses the gas a little bit more because obviously it's a narrower aperture. Um, and here's a good tip that a lot of you might not know. Cleaning these, especially when you're on site and you're using a lot of welding, a lot of people will use the old, where are they? Run of the mill, everyone's got them, even in America. I have heard the American ones are imperial. Ah, look at that. Yeah, everyone knows these, don't they? Big pliers. And everyone uses these bits to screw the dingus in there and give it a good old twizzle whizzle, scrape all the crap out, whatever, bang it on the side of the bench. Actually, get yourself one of these. It's a battery brush. And the reason I like these is because it gets used for all sorts of things, but it comes with a really stiff, nice brass, focus you monkey, uh, wire brush, which is perfect for raking in there and scraping it all out. And it does a lovely job, nice and clean in there. Look at that. That was filthy about 20 minutes ago when I was cleaning. And you've got some other things. Obviously, these are for the battery terminals when you're clearing up, cleaning up lead acid batteries, which, yeah, you could probably use that on other bits of it, but that is a good brush. Buy yourself one of them. Probably get them off that, um, what's that, uh, that South American rainforest place. Yeah, that one, you know the one I mean. Um, <clears throat> so, we can put all that lot to one side. What else do I keep in, in the side of the machine? Uh, one of those pea shooter, yeah, g gas uh, gas measure up, yeah, five litres to 20 litres a minute with the old pea shooter ball inside. Keep that inside the bottom in there, sits uh, out of the way, it doesn't get in the way of the wire. Very useful, especially if when you're on site, especially if your gauge suddenly packs up or you're not sure. Or like the other day, for those of you who saw my last video when I was doing that trailer, um, it was really windy, so I was having a bit of trouble with gas coverage on the welds, um, which is why I did end up switching to stick. Uh, um, but uh, yeah, I did start to try by turning up the gas feed. Um, anyway, so out of, uh, out of the works, you also get um, a really good quality stinger, okay? Um, 25 mil cable, uh, five, four meters long um, with a very good stinger. Um, I'm interested to see the, uh, I don't know whether in, I see in America, there's a lot of different style of stingers. You guys seem to use different ones. 
Um, some interesting ones. I wouldn't mind if somebody could send me one because it would be quite cool to do a comparison. Um, these are these are one of the standard ones. So yeah, uh, Stinger, everyone knows what they do for stick welding. Chuck that over there. Um, earth clamp. This is not actually the earth clamp that the uh, supplier sends out. This is just another one that I've built um, using double insulated 35 mil cable with a 600 amp clamp on it. In fact, I'll find, again, we can do a comparison size. Uh, in the store of plenty, down here. Ow. Just demolish the nine inch grinder off my fingers. Let's chuck one on the bench. So again, this is, this is the standard uh, workpiece return lead that they send out. 50 mil cable on it. Yeah, I did say that, 50 mil. That's the clamp, 500 amp, monster. And again, if we take it over to the Kempi, I'll do a, uh, do a size comparison. So 500 amp versus a, get out of the way, silly cable, 500 amp versus a 200 amp. Huge, and it needs to be huge. Although, having said that, sometimes I don't like using it because I prefer screw on ones like that because you can get a much size of connection. I've had that one get a bit hot. Um, yeah, so that's the accessories generally with the machine. Going back to the torch. Um, good good, uh, good torch is sent out. I'm just going to put the shroud back on that. Excuse me, do this with one hand. There we go. So, um, torch is standard from Phil Weeks is a 350 amp MB36, four meter par weld MIG torch. Yeah, they, they're good these, I like these. Um, there is better ones on the, I know there's a, uh, better ones on the market, I think. I was gonna say there's other alternatives on the market, uh, binzels, etc. but it does the job. Um, nice long neck on it as well, so it keeps, <laughs> keeps your pinkies away from the angry pixies, because there's a lot of them. And um, yeah, standard, again, standard fitting, you all, the, all the replaceable shroud inside and standard Euro torch. Um, these are different to a Tueco. Um, connections are different to a Tueco as well for those Americans that are watching and watching the channel, which uh, I hope there is. Um, if any of you would like to um, pick up on some very, very good content online, I can highly recommend the Welding Tips and Tricks, Tricks podcast. That is awesome, and their channel, along with... Um, there's another one, isn't it? What's it called? Um, I'll think of it in a minute. He'll come back to me. Jason Becker, that's the man. He does it. He used to be on weld.com. Um, so, yeah, uh, there's uh, some good stuff there. So, um, where are we going with this video? We are going to stop it for now, because I have got to go and do some other stuff. And then we'll pick up um, probably tomorrow, maybe. Um, with I'm going to show show you some loading some wire, setting the machine up, and we'll actually do a bit of uh, bit of squirting some uh, squirting some hot glue about. Um, but yeah. So see you in a bit. Bye.